I've talked about classic image formats and how they're all older than the Rolling Stones. Now, to be frank, the PNG, the GIF, the JPEG, and the SVG at this very moment are a combined 104 years old. Now, this is not to talk about ageism, but this simply means that these are formats that we know well and how there's competent tooling. Now, when it comes to tooling, newer formats have been a little challenged. Despite celebrating a 10th year anniversary, the WebP has seen a scarcity of visibility and even greater scarcity in tooling. Luckily, I know about Squoosh, a image compression client-side app. I was even luckier to know the dev team. Uh, so shout outs to uh, Adam, Ava, uh, Jake, Jason, uh, Mariko, Mustafa, and Paul. But here to talk about Squoosh is the last member of the team, Surma. He's going to talk about how they've had support for WebP for some time, just recently added support for AVIF, are discussing support for JPEG Excel, while all in between talking about image compression. So here's Surma to talk about Squoosh. Enjoy. We can. Brilliant. Then off I go. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. I'm, I'm quite excited about this event because it is so perfectly timed for what I've been working on with my team. Um, and that's really what I want to talk about because there's, there's many things happening in the world, in, in my team, and they all kind of belong together. And that's just really exciting to me. So I was really, I'm really fortunate that Henri decided to, to call this, this event into existence. Um, so I want to talk about Squoosh.app. Some of you might have heard of it, some of you might not, but what it basically is, it's a web app which allows you to compress images. Um, you know, we have a couple of sample images, so you can just try out the app and immediately start working with it. But it, you, know, you can also just drag and drop your own images and you know, just open them um, because you know, the sample images all will only get you so far. And once you drop in an image, you get this before after view where you can choose a codec and inspect what kind of artifacts the chosen codec introduces to your image. You can move that slider to really visualize what has changed with compression and without compression. You can even zoom in to like really see the difference here on the right hand side. I mean, it's over WebRDC. I'm not sure how well you can actually see these artifacts, but the blockiness of JPEG is quite visible on the right hand side, which is not present in the original on the left hand side. But the really interesting thing I think in Squoosh is that we also expose as many options as possible that these different encoders offer. So it's, yes, you start out with just a single quality slider, which you probably know from like Photoshop where you just say, yeah, okay, JPEG 100 quality. But we actually give every, indice, every individual lever that a codec offers. So you can actually try out how more aggressive chroma subsampling will affect the image at hand and also how it affects your file size. Um, I especially love watching developers uh, try out the pointless spec compliance that Mods JPEG offers, as well as Trellis Multipass, which I'm convinced they only added because it's a fun word to say. It's like, Trellis Multipass. A quick intermezzo, which is actually ties in a little bit into um, the talk we just heard by Jen, is I Squoosh was made by web developers for web developers. And I feel obliged to mention that as web developers, most of the time you shouldn't zoom if you're optimizing images for the web. You should make them as big in Squoosh as they're roughly going to be on the website. The whole point about image compression is that you're trying to save bytes by introducing some form of artifacts or some visual artifacts as long as they are acceptable or ideally even imperceptible. And zooming makes things perceptible that are usually not. So that will, that way, if you zoom in, you end up paying for bytes that you know, pay for details that actually nobody will be able to appreciate. So make them as big as they're on the website and then play with the site. Just put the quality down so it still looks good. If it zooms in, it will look bad, but on the website, it will look right. And that's how you can really optimize your images to be a lot, lot smaller. So Squoosh, we announced at Chrome Dev Summit 2018. So that was pretty much two years ago. And if you fancy, we obviously gave a talk about it. My colleague Mariko and Jake gave that one. Um, 
and it's 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 a good talk. It's definitely worth watching. But I thought I wanted to like rip out the bits that I found most interesting. And that is mostly what our goals were. Like, why did we write Scoosh to begin with? And the main goals were threefold. So me and my team, we work in developer relations. And so our goal is that we build things so we really walk the walk of the developer so we can actually make sure that the guidance that our team gives out is, you know, realistic and can be followed in a real world scenario. And so one of these things that back in 2018 was still very new was the progressive web app. And PWAs were quite buzzy and I think they actually still are a little bit buzzy. But back in 2018, it wasn't necessarily well defined what a PWA really is or at what point you cross the line from a website to a PWA. Um, and mostly, I think there was a lot of skepticism around if the web platform as a whole is actually po uh, able to allow you to build these smooth, high quality experiences that are competitive with native apps. Um, so what we wanted to try is to build something that is a web app, a PWA, but actually make people do a double take when you tell them that it's actually just a web app. And to an extent, I think we actually achieved this goal. And the second part is that we wanted to use tools and frameworks that were popular or some, if something of these popular tools proved to be a no-go, we tried to find something that was similar so that the lessons that we learned would still be applicable to the largest audience possible. And so we ended up using Preact uh, and we used web components in combination which, with Preact, which works really well. We made heavy use of workers because of all this compression, that's quite heavy computational work. And all of that got bundled using Webpack and that way, with all these tools, we paid a lot of attention that this app is performing well, even on weaker mobile devices. And so one thing that I'm really proud of is that through all these best practices, Squoosh is usable within, like actually interactive within three seconds, even over a slow 3G network connection, even on a hyper-constrained device. Um, and we also make use of service workers so that you can use this app while offline and compress images. And yeah, that is something that you might not have known. Like the compression happens all on the client side in the web app. Scrooge does not have a server side. It is a completely static page and we never send the images anywhere. So there's, this is completely local privacy preserving. The images never leave your device if you compress them with Scrooge. And we achieve this by running these image encoders, the image codecs in the browser using WebAssembly. So we pretty much just went out into the ecosystem in 2018 and took the, like used the encoders one-to-one -one off the shelf. We started with Mods JPEG, OptiPNG to optimize PNG images and WebP, which are all C or C++ libraries. And so in 2018, M uh, WebAssembly was still fairly new, MScript was still fairly new, but we only had to learn MScript because we only were using C-based libraries. Later, we then started shipping the resize Rust crate that Kagami and Cornell wrote, uh, and an image rotation module that we hand wrote in AssemblyScript, which is a TypeScript to WebAssembly compiler. And we wrote that in AssemblyScript because we wanted to make use of loop tiling for extra efficiency. Um, and we also actually compiled the decoders or some of the decoders to WebAssembly because if a browser doesn't have support for WebP, we still wanted you to be able to inspect WebP images and see what the difference is. So we, for example, WebP decoder is compiled to WebAssembly. So before Safari supported WebP, you could still use it within Squoosh because we shipped our own decoder via WebAssembly, which I thought was a really cool story. But honestly, to get back to why did we write Squoosh, one of the biggest reasons for us was that WebP had been out for a while. At the time that we published Scrooge, it's been eight years that WebP was out. And, you know, us as WebDevRel had kind of been aware of these massive advantages in file size that WebP could bring, but were also aware at the struggle to getting people to actually adopt it. And so we felt like one of the main reasons was that it was too hard to convert images to WebP. Maybe not hard, but there was just no low friction, easy way to make it part of your pipeline. And I think that was a major hurdle. You know, you, I mean, you could get, you know, the compression tools, but then you're kind of like stuck with a CLI and you compress your images, but then you kind of just get default settings and maybe you like the result, maybe you don't. And then you try to figure out what are the settings that you like. It's quite tedious. And I think these kind of CLI tools are also not very easy to integrate with build tooling either. 
And I think at the same time, many people had grown kind of skeptical of image codecs and their websites. So there's on these websites where somebody announces their new image format, they, they often just show these sample images where their format is doing well and all the other codecs are bad. And you know, when you look at those, I kind of feel that these images are, you know, situ or these advantages are situational at best and cherry picked at worst. And I certainly don't believe those websites. I don't believe a codec until I can try it out with my own images. And you should do the same thing. You should not believe advertising websites or believe the, the, the website of a codec until you have tried yourself. And our idea was that Scrooge should, was to become that platform. You could try out these codecs with your own images, with all options and levers and whatnot at your disposal so you can form your own opinion without any biases. So why am I talking about this? Well, we, we've been working to give Squoosh some more love. This is just a mock, so this doesn't exist yet, but it, it looks nice, right? But obviously it's not just a visual overhaul. Um, we have also, once again, a bunch of web technologies that we want to trial like we did in the original Squoosh. For example, uh, WebAssembly has matured and at least theoretically, WebAssembly can now make use of threads in SIMD, and both of these technologies are quite potent for image codecs and can make compression a lot faster if the codec makes use of them. Um, but most importantly, we are at this inflection point where I feel like three new image codecs are about to be released or unleashed onto the ecosystem in the web ecosystem. And these three new codecs are JPEG XL, WebP2, and AVIF. And I'm not going to go into detail how they work, A, because I don't necessarily know, and B, because we have all the experts here tonight. Um, and all these new next generation codecs support the next gen stuff like white gamut, HDR, alpha. I think actually even all of them support animations, but Scrooge as a team has kind of declared animations out of scope, so I, um, I haven't looked into those things. Um, so as a quick overview, like JPEG XL, Code, the codec is specifically designed for the web. And one of the distinguishing features of JPEG originally was that it has progressive rendering where the resolution of the image increases over time as more and more bytes come in. And as far as I know, JPEG XL will continue to have that feature. And one thing that I'm really looking forward to experimenting is the compatibility mode that they're talking about where the encoder admits a file that is actually a normal good old JPEG that is decodable by old JPEG decoders, but has additional JPEG XL information in a meta header that will be ignored by old codecs, but can be taken advantage of by new decoders and enhance the image. And we have JPEG XL in a branch in Squoosh, um, but currently the colors are going all wrong and on certain configuration it crashes. And so we're going back and forth between, did I write, did I, did I use the codec library wrong? Is there a bug in the encoder? Is there a bug in M script? And then so we are working with all these teams to make sure that this can ship to stable without weird results. WebP2, or WP2 for short, is the successor of WebP. The name and the extension are still kind of subject to change, by the way, and Pascal will talk more about WP2 later um, because very little is known, but Pascal told me that it might change today a little bit, so I'm looking forward to that. And we may or may not have a internal build of Squoosh with WP2, so I can't wait to get that out into the public as well. And obviously, AVAF is the only format that was actually not designed for the web out of the three of them. It's actually designed to hold the keyframes in AV1 videos. And yet it is the only codec out of these three codecs that made it into the stable release of a browser. In this case, it's Chrome, and it's actually also behind the flag in Firefox. And it is actually available in Squoosh right now. So we can try this out and see how AVAF performs for your images. The encoder is pretty slow, so you need to be a bit patient. But in another branch, my colleague Ingvar is experimenting with using um, WebAssembly threads, which so far has shown to be to give it a reasonable speed up. All in all, just to summarize, the whole point of Squoosh is to not just believe these marketing sites, but that you can explore how different settings affect your image visually and in file size. And I urge you to do the same thing with all these new codecs. Um, I, I don't think there needs to be a single winner between these three. I, I think we've all learned that PNG is better for some images and JPEG is better for some for like photos or in some other categories. And I think the mi same might apply here, where different categories of images are best suited to different codecs. But clearly, by the way, none of these next-gen codecs are good at logos because none of these 
the websites of these codecs actually use their own image format. And they could, and I think that's really important for people to realize you can use more formats on the web right now because the picture element that Jen mentioned allows you to define multiple sources for the same image and the browser will take the first one in the list that it supports. So if you define the type of an image, the browser will skip the ones it doesn't support. And if so, if a browser doesn't support AVF, it will use the WebP. If it doesn't, use, doesn't support WebP, it will use the PNG. And if for some reason you have to support IE11, which doesn't support picture element, the picture element will degrade to basically an empty div and the image tag will load. So you can literally use this in all browsers and serve this right now and have browsers download less bytes because these new formats are really, really efficient and good. Another big feature that we're working on comes from listening to our user base. Um, so let's say you're working on a website and you have these speaker avatars. And I think we've all seen or encountered websites where these little images in the circle are like high resolution, one megabyte speaker images. Um, and Squoosh is great for compressing those kind of images. So we took an image, we scaled it down to 256 by 256, and we figured out the best settings within Mods JPEG and WebP to minimize file size and keeping quality at an acceptable level. Now, do you want to go through every single picture in your speaker folder and apply the settings manually? No, of course not, but we did because Squoosh can only edit one picture at a time. And that can get incredibly annoying and many other people have filed issues around this. Our first idea to address this kind of problem is that we are probably going to add a button to Squoosh that will turn the current configuration that you have figured out into a CLI invocation. And then you can run a note-based CLI of Squoosh which will run over this whole bunch of images for you. And the CLI will use the same codec, so it will use the WebAssembly 5 versions. And this allows us to um, use the same code across multiple platforms. It also gives us even more of a reason to publish these codecs individually to NPM so that other projects can make use of these next-gen codecs more easily. We are pushing the boundaries of WebAssembly here a bit. So in its current incarnation, it is not going to be super fast. Like projects like Sharp that compile these image encoders to native binaries will most likely continue to be faster. But actually, this one that uses WebAssembly in the hood is fast enough to do this kind of batch processing in acceptable times, which makes me really, really happy. We still have some bugs to fix, and some features are still missing. But I hope that we can share uh, the CLI with the external world properly soon. So with all that said, I hope I got you a bit excited about Squoosh. Um, I if you have more questions, I will take some now, but I'll also be available on Twitter at DasSoma. And if you want to know more when Squoosh is ready and how to use it, you should probably keep an eye out for the Chrome Dev Summit 2020 that is going to get announced soon.